Ever picked a fight with someone that seemed an easy kill just to regret it almost instantly and get your ass beat? Well, that's exactly what these characters are going to do today. And that is why for today we will be talking about the top 10 anime where the main character surprises everyone with his powers. So before we begin, be sure to hit the subscribe button and press on that bell icon and set us all to be notified about all our latest new videos. And it comes without saying, be aware of the following spoilers. Coming at number 10 is Isekai Cheap Magician. This might not be one of the best anime out there, however, clearly it deserves its position on this list with an MC that keeps getting buffed and strengthened every two seconds of the episode. His range of abilities just seems to grow non-stop and his mastery over them is also quite remarkable to say the least. Taichi finding himself in an unknown world with his friend slash love interest Rin gives him the incentive to finally take the reins, go out on this long adventure, and discover a way back home for him and Rin. His abilities range from super strength and durability all the way to releasing wind spells without incantations and creating light constructs and blades that he can shoot from afar or use up close like a normal blade. Point is, this guy's arsenal is stacked. Coming in number 9 is Yuto Suo from the Master of Ragnarok and Blesser of Enheriar. Even though he doesn't have abilities per se like all the entrees on this list, yet this guy with his wit, skills, and solar powered phone that somehow has a fully functional internet connection in another world was able to single-handedly bring the Wolf Clan all the way from ruins to one of the strongest clans in the world, just like that. Thanks to the strategies he took off the internet and executing them to near perfection, he was able to subdue literal kingdoms to his will and even receive the acknowledgement of none other than the Valkyries from Norse mythology, or as they are called, the Ein Heriar. This character, thanks to his phone and its magical Wi-Fi connection, created the major power that is the Wolf Clan. However, the journey to end all wars and unite the nation under one rule is still a far-fetched dream that he might reach someday. Vampire! Coming in at number 8 is Kufa from Assassin's Pride. Bring in someone with the finesse and assassination techniques of Shu from Darker Than Black, with the fighting skills of Iki from Chivalry of a Failed Knight, and sprinkle a bit of healing factor from Wolverine, and mix that all together in a giant fucking mixer, and you get Kufa Vampire. And in case the vampire in the name wasn't enough giveaway, then you should probably know that this man is a half vampire lickanthrope. The strongest, as a matter of fact, with the ability to even heal severed limbs almost instantly in ways that puts the regeneration of Deadpool and Wolverine to shame. Vampire was given the quest to train Melita and discover if she has an affinity for mana, a form of power in this forsaken world of domed cities and monsters lurking in the dark. This is what we can call a model example of a dystopian society. Vampire was tasked to kill Melida the moment he feels that she is unable to utilize her mana. Being a well-renowned assassin, he agrees at first. However, getting to know her and just how determined she is, he goes against the rules of his contract and against his benefactors in order to help Melida to fully realize her dream and awaken her dormant abilities. <laughs> Coming at number 7, it's Tsukasa from High School Prodigies Have It Easy Even in Another World. I'm not sure how or why. This guy is the Prime Minister of Japan at the age of 15, or something like that. And don't get me started on how this guy, along with seven other remarkable teens that have the achievements of adults to their names, survived a plane crash that crashed in another world. This man is such a prodigy, he exposed the corruption of his father, the previous prime minister, who took him to court and won. 
even got disowned by his own family and crash landed in another world, yet somehow he was still able to govern this new world and introduce those relatively primitive beings to modern government systems. Building them an entire city with the help of the other six prodigies that crashed with him out of almost thin air. If that's not a power, uh, I don't know what is. Coming in at number six is Death March to a Parallel World Rhapsody. Yet another isekai harem anime, and we all know what kind of main characters these shows tend to feature. Broken, overpowered, godlike, and stronger than gods type of main characters, that is. Especially when it comes to this guy after finding himself stuck in the world from his game with the gaming interface he was developing as his menu. Two minutes later, he obliterates an entire army of lizardmen with just one tiny experimental spell he had added to the interface prior to his isekai. That spell being Meteor, a spell so iconic and powerful in the world of gaming, it is even acknowledged as a god killer tier spell. Wiping out all the lizard men with one fell swoop allowed this main character to fully max his level and gain almost infinite skill points that he allocates later on into his skill tree according to what he needs and requires in the heat of the moment. Oh, and uh, did I mention he has access to all classes and isn't bound to a certain class of any or to its specific class skills? Yeah, this guy, uh, he has it all. He can be an archer that shoots fireballs, or he can be a berserker with rage that can heal. The sky is the limits with this player interface, and this skill tree of his, he's gonna use all those skills to his advantage in ways you can never expect. Coming in number 5 is how not to summon a demon lord. Rule number 1 when summoning a demon lord. Check if he has magic deflecting items. That's the one thing these two numbskulls didn't account for when summoning Diablo, the demon king to their world. After summoning him, they attempted to bind him to an enslavement contract spell only for the spell to rebound on them thanks to his magical item that protected him from their spell, and Diablo in reality is nothing but a teen with zero social skills and his only thing in life was to play this MMORPG where he dominated everyone thanks to his skill, power, superior levels, and items. Sakamoto Takuma finding himself the master of two invokers and in the body of his avatar from the game decides to go on and explore this game-like world in hopes of finding a way back home and freeing himself from those two that are bound to him. <laughs> Coming in at number 4 is Seven Ghosts. The last thing you can expect from an amnesiac combat slave in a military academy is the fact that he is the long lost heir of a kingdom that was destroyed by the hands of the Barsberg Empire. Taito Klein, the main character of the show, is actually the prince of the Rags Empire, and if that wasn't enough of a shock for you guys, then this part sure will do the trick. He is also the bearer of the Eye of Mikhail the same magical talisman orb that his kingdom was burnt asunder, searching for high and low, and his father hate his life protecting it. The Eye of Mikhail grants his user immense magical powers, or as called in this anime, Xiphon abilities, and allows them to channel the power of the corresponding angel. In this case, it is Mikhail. Hold on. Coming at number 3 is Tokyo Ravens. On Miodo is the power the Japanese used in the Second World War and they almost won because of it. However, they got greedy and the great spiritual disaster took place instead. An event that was so catastrophic it destroyed almost the entirety of Japan, cost it the war, and is still suffering from its ramifications to this present day. At the center of it all lies the Reverend Onmyoji Yako Tsuchimikado, the one behind it all. 
Now, the question is, how does the main character fit into all of this when he is actually someone with zero powers? Well, this nobody of a main character is actually the true reincarnation of the genius Yako Tsuchi Mikado, the strongest Onmyuji to ever live. His battles won't be easy, and along the way, the truth of who he is will be revealed to him bit by bit until he comes to the full realization of his true identity. Coming in at number two is Drifters. Toyohisa Shimazu is a proud samurai that knows nothing better than killing his enemies and beheading them. He is so powerful and swift, he will show you the true supremacy of a samurai warrior fighting for the sake of his clan and allies. Even after his death and reincarnation into another world to fight in a battle he never asked for, he never backed down and took the reins almost immediately. His first action was killing the guard that stole the elvish women and enslaved their men in the most satisfying way imaginable. Smashing the guard's face with Toyohisa's scabbard was such a cruel and fitting way to make the guard suffer for his actions. And with the help of a genius monster like Nobunaga, the Shimazu clan is bound to make a triumphant return in this world at some point. Piece of advice? Try not to piss him off unless you really want your head served on a plate. Seriously. If you want your head served, then be my guest. And number one goes to World Trigger. In any school, whether it's anime or real life, military or board school, being unique is a recipe for disaster. You become the laughing stock of everyone around you for no reason at all. The same can be said to this character due to his tiny stature and unique looks, red eyes and white hair. He became his class's public enemy number one. The thing they didn't know about this kid, however, was the fact that on the battlefield and in mock battles, he is peerless and no one can beat him, not in terms of strategies, speed, and agility, or even strength. This kid just proved that he is of a league of his own, and no one can ever reach his level anytime soon. Whether it was talent or hard work, one thing was always clear as day. Picking a fight with this individual won't end well for anyone. Hey! What do you mean? And with that, we conclude our video. If you enjoyed this list, I want you to smash that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button and press on that bell icon to keep yourself notified of all our latest new videos. Also, comment down below on the anime you like the most on this list, and if you're planning to watch any of them. And if you have any suggestions, place them in the comments down below. And as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.